Fermented foods are key to optimal gut health. If you didn't know, now you will. We live side by side with bacteria and viruses. And by side by side, I mean they live in us, on us, and around us. They are everywhere. In many cases, we have a symbiotic relationship with bacteria. Bacteria in our guts, referred to as a microbiome, help us break down food so we can absorb nutrients, maintain structural integrity of the gut mucosal barrier, are involved in immunomodulation, which is a fancy word for helps our immune system, protects us against dangerous path pathogens. We have bacteria on our skin, which provide a protective layer against other harmful microbes and play a role in normal maintenance of healthy skin. And we have viruses embedded in our DNA that can produce proteins that help block infection by other viruses. Through tissue sampling and genetic decoding, we know exactly what these bacteria are. We know their names. We also know what foods and drinks contain beneficial bacteria to promote diversity in our guts. Research has demonstrated some amazing health benefits to eating these bacteria-rich foods regularly. There are times when we also really need to up our probiotic intake and to repopulate our bacteria, like taking antibiotics. They wipe out both good and bad bacteria in our gut. Also with a gut illness, there's usually an overpopulation of bad bacteria or viruses like the norovirus, for example. And this would be another good time to up your probiotic intake. So stick around, you will get the list of the best, highest probiotic content and most beneficial fermented foods so you can synergize with these friendly microbes. Chris here, registered nurse, certified clinical nurse leader with my focus being research. First, let's identify the bacteria, where they are located, and the benefits they give us. It's important to know that each individual has their own unique gut microbiota. Gut bacteria are composed of different bacteria, species, taxonomically classified by genus, family, order, and phyla. Our gut microbiota is shaped very early on in our lives, and the composition depends on both gestational date, type of delivery, methods of milk feeding, weaning period, and some external factors like antibiotic use. Our core microbiome remains relatively stable throughout our lives, but can be greatly affected by BMI, exercise frequency, lifestyle, and cultural and dietary habits like fasting. So we are all unique, but there is a healthy host microorganism balance that must be respected in order to optimally perform metabolic and immune functions and prevent disease development. Research has shown that dysbiosis, the opposite of symbiosis, is not only associated with intestinal disorders, but also with numerous extra intestinal diseases such as metabolic and neurological disorders. Gut microbiota are composed of several different species of microorganisms, including bacteria, yeast, and viruses. The dominant gut microbial phyla are firmicutes, bacteriodates, actinobacteria, proteobacteria, fusobacteria, and verrucomicrobia. Two phyla, firmicutes and bacteriodetes account for about 90% of the gut microbes. Firmicutes are composed of more than 200 different genres such as lactobacillus, bacillus, clostridium, enterococcus, and ruminococcus. Clostridium genre represents 95% of the firmicutes phyla. Bacteriodetes consist of predominant genera such as bacterioids and pre prevotella. Some of these are hard to say. The actinobacteria phylum is proportionally less abundant and mainly represented by the bifidobacterium genus. Before I get into the good stuff, I need your help. If you like this kind of content, do me a favor. Like and subscribe and comment. These three easy actions trigger the YouTube algorithm so this information gets sound out to more people. All right, what do firmicutes do? Firmicutes phylum is pivotal for human health, primarily because of its involvement in producing butyrate, which is a naturally occurring fatty acid in our bodies. Butyrate exerts multiple effects, including prevention and inhibition of colonic carcinogenesis, decreased inflammation, enhanced epithelial defense barrier, and the modulation of visceral sensitivity and intestinal motility. It is essential for maintaining intestinal homeostasis and has beneficial effects on energy metabolism. Many members of this phylum are also probiotics, which produce other important substances and metabolites like acetate, which help to ward off dangerous pathogens that can make you very sick. Some research points to firmicutes and association between the lower risk of cardiovascular disease and ischemic heart disease. And so what are bacteriodetes good for? They are proficient in polysaccharide fermentation that produces a pool of short-chain fatty acids like acetate, butyrate, and other vital molecules. We already talked about how important acetate and butyrate are. They may also be absorbed through the large intestine and serve as an energy source for the host and also provide nutrition and vitamins to other intestinal microbial residents. They occupy space to optimize colonization resistance of the host against opportunistic pathogens like C. diff, which is the leading cause of nosocomial infection. Have you ever smelled stool from a C. diff infection? Oh man, no bueno. 
One thing I want to mention, I think we all know how important exercise is, at least from a superficial standpoint. It helps us maintain a healthy weight, it's good for the heart, lungs, and basically all our organs. But from a gut microbiome perspective, daily exercise has been shown to increase gut microbial diversity with the Firmicutes Enrichment Microbiota by producing more short-chain fatty acids. And without getting too technical, research has shown this heightens the resistance of the intestinal barrier, reduces mucosal permeability, and inhibits inflammatory cytokines. Now on to something else we can control the food we put in our bellies fermented foods can help bolster the gut microbiome creating a healthier mix of microbes and strengthening the walls of the intestines and to avoid leaky gut diversity is key okay on to the healthiest best for your gut research back fermented foods here's my favorite that are in no particular order number one apple cider vinegar which is vinegar made from fermented apple juice I made a video on how amazing apples are as a probiotic and that you should eat the entire apple because the core is where 90% of the bacteria reside. Be sure to check that video out. Apple cider vinegar contains some pro probiotics and it also contains certain types of acids like acetic acid which supports the function of probiotics and prebiotics in your gut. Number two, kefir, or kefir, which is a fermented milk product made from a cow, goat, or sheep's milk that tastes like a, a drinkable yogurt. Kefir benefits include providing high levels of vitamin B12, calcium, magnesium, vitamin K2, biotin, folate, enzymes, and probiotics. Kefir has been consumed for well over 3,000 years. The term kefir was started in Russia and Turkey and means feeling good. Along the same lines, I just started making water kefir. It has been an enjoyable process, produces delicious tasting juices with all the amazing health benefits I'm looking for in fermented foods. So check this video out. All right, so this is my water kefir. As you can see, the grains are down there. And uh, I'll show you the process here in a moment. And I will put a little bit of juice in these bottles and then pour the rest of that uh, kefir water in there. Let it do a second fermentation for another uh, 48 hours. And then uh, we'll see you get something like, uh, you get something like this. Now you can use a lot of different juices. I have, uh, let's see, this orange juice. Before I was using a mango pineapple, but you know, you just pour in a little bit. Now I've got my water kefir. We may not make a mess here. And that's that, pretty simple. Just let it sit in that jar for 48 hours little juice in another bottle, let it ferment for another 48 hours, and then you get a nice bubbly, fizzy drink. And I like it, it's just a different strain of bacteria. I'd still drink kombucha, I like kombucha too, but they both have different strains. So like uh, I said in the video, diversity is key when it comes to your gut microbiome. Just added three cups of water. This is a eighth of a cup of sugar, white cane sugar, about an eighth and a cup of brown sugar. And I also like to add a little bit of uh, Himalayan salt, give it little, little electrolytes. Mix it all up. Come back, I grab my kefir grains. Those go back in there. I have some extra here I'm gonna pour in. And then I cover it with a breathable top. Let it sit for 48 hours, rinse and repeat. Number three, sauerkraut. One of the oldest traditional foods made from fermented green or red cabbage. Sauerkraut is high in fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin K, and B vitamins. It's also a great source of iron, copper, calcium, sodium, manganese, and magnesium. Real traditional fermented sauerkraut needs to be refrigerated. It is usually stored in glass jars and says that it's fermented on the package label. Number four, kimchi is a traditional fermented Korean dish that is made from vegetables including cabbage plus spices like ginger, garlic, pepper, and other seasoning. Chuck full of amazing good bacteria. Number five, fermented pickles contain a ton of vitamins and minerals plus antioxidants and gut-friendly probiotic bacteria. 
Store-bought pickles are usually not fermented. Most store-bought pickles are made with vinegar and cucumbers. And although this makes the pickles taste sour, this doesn't lead to natural fermentation. Fermented pickles should be made with cucumbers and brine, salt and water. And when choosing a jar of pickles, look for lactic acid fermented pickles made by a manufacturer that uses organic products and brine, refrigerates the pickles, and states that the pickles have been fermented. If you can find a local maker, such as at a farmer's market, you'll get some of the best probiotics for your health. Now to recap, we all have our own unique microbiome whose foundation is formed very early on in life. Throughout our lives, certain factors can influence our gut's internal microbial landscape in a good or bad way. We know that a healthy gut will help you better withstand external and internal threats. And how do we promote a healthy gut? Exercise, fasting, and eating the foods I discussed today. That is how you set yourself up for success. That is how you stay healthy, feel good, and live longer and disease free. I hope you got something good out of this today. If you did, do me a favor, like and subscribe and comment down below. What is your favorite fermented food, bacteria rich food? Thanks for watching. Nurse Chris out.